Hey, what's up everybody? Today is the day we are gonna be talking about the Arlo Ultra. And at the end of this video, we have a giveaway, so stay tuned. If you guys have seen any of my previous videos, you know that I have done quite a few on this Arlo Ultra. Some not so good, more recent ones have been a lot better. So this is not gonna be your traditional review that I've done in the past. We are not going to do an unboxing. I am not going to show you how to install these or set them up, and we are not going to cover the apps. I've done all that in previous videos. You can check it out here. I'll put links for all those videos up there. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm going to be going over a lot of the features of the camera. We're gonna be showing you guys some demos of that. For example, we're gonna go over the hardware and what it offers. I'm gonna show you guys the image quality of this camera. We are going to take a look at its ability to actually read a license plate. And um, I'm gonna show you guys color night vision as well as the normal night vision. Another thing that I've done is I have gone through all of my past videos. I have written a lot of your questions down and I'm gonna be trying to answer those throughout this video too. And at the end of all of that, we'll talk about the giveaway at the end. So with all of that said, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about hardware. So if you're familiar at all with the previous Arlo base station, this guy looks a lot different. It's a little bit smaller. We see the Arlo logo, and we also see the indicator light when it is plugged in. If we take a look at the back here, the back here we've got a sync button for syncing up your cameras. We've got the network LAN port, the power port, and the reset button. Notice that there is no more USB connector on the back of this device. You cannot connect an external hard drive to this thing. This only takes a micro SD card. And for that, if we look at the bottom of the device, down here you can see the slot for the micro SD card. And in regards to the micro SD card, to answer some of your questions, the max size that you can put in there is a 256 gig card. They recommend a minimum of a 16 gig card that you put into this thing. I have a two camera system. Both cameras are recording 4K to this base station and I am getting about 30 days of recordings on two cameras. Now, I know that's going to be different for everybody because it depends on how much activity you get, but that is what I am getting right now. I am getting 30 days off a 32 gig card off of two cameras. So keep that in mind. Now, if we take a look at the camera itself, the camera has a new charging port on the bottom. It is magnetic, which is really awesome. I, re I really like that you can just pop that on there and it's a magnet that holds it onto it. You don't have to worry about trying to plug anything into it. It is on the bottom too, so it doesn't get in the way of any of the mounts that you have. This does have the same threading as all of the previous cameras, so you can use your same mounts that have threading on the back of here. One difference with this though is that it's not magnetic on the back. So with the old Pro 2s, I could stick this to the side of something metal and just stick the camera there. With this one, the magnet is in the actual mounts that come with it. This is not magnetic at all on the back. So keep that in mind with this one. If we take a look at the front of the camera, you can see that it now has a spotlight. And I was a little concerned with the spotlight. I wasn't sure how well it was going to work. We'll get to that later when we talk about the night vision and color night vision. We also now have two microphones and a speaker in the front of this too, which really help with the audio. Taking a look at the bottom, we can see the extra button that we have down here. And these cameras boast what's called a catch, meaning that when you push the bottom of this, if it is mounted and you need to get the battery out, what you can do is you can push this and the camera will slightly pop out, but catch itself so it doesn't fall out. This will allow you to grab the side of the front and pull it all the way out to be able to access the battery on the back. If you have an external charger, you can then take the battery put it in there or replace it with any backup batteries that you do have. Then all you have to do when you're done is just pop the battery back in there and push it back into the mount. And this way you don't have to be taking it down and readjusting the position at all. So that's kind of a nice feature with these cameras here. All right, now to answer a few of your questions that you had in previous videos, that is, does the Arlo Ultra connect to the Pro 2 base? As of right now, it does not, but they did announce that this would be a feature available down the road. I don't know when that's gonna be, but it should be available later this year. The next question was, how far can the camera go from the base? It says 300 feet. Now, I've mentioned this before in previous videos, I am in a neighborhood that is very compact. There's a lot of Wi-Fi signals and houses just right on top of each other. 
I was able to test it and get about 150, maybe close to 200 feet away from my base station before I was really getting some bad signal loss. But I did reach out to one of you. So Joe, thank you for testing that out for me. He lives in a more open area and he was able to test that out and said that he was getting about 410 feet before he was losing signal. So Joe, thank you for testing that out for me. So your experience may vary depending on the area that you live in. Another big question that I have is that these being security cameras, what happens if the internet goes down? Will the cameras continue to record? I have tested this out and I found that they do not continue to record. So when I lost my internet, I unplugged it. I went around the house, tested all the cameras out. I was no longer getting any notification, even though all of my internal network and my router and everything was still up and running. I was getting no notifications from my Arlo system. I then plugged everything back in after a half hour and I had no recordings on the camera. So when I lost internet, the cameras did seem to stop functioning. Last question I had that was hardware based somewhat is what does the siren sound like in the cameras now? So if you guys weren't aware of this, they took the siren out of the base and now the siren is actually built into each individual camera. I will jump to that footage right now, showing you guys and giving you guys a demo of what the sirens sound like on these guys. So in the app up here, we are just going to hit this button. We're gonna say activate siren. This one is for the garage. Okay, let's see what it sounds like. This is actually not too loud. All right, family is outside. We've got the camera inside. Let's test it out and see what it sounds like with everything closed up in the house. See if we can hear the siren from outside. All right, so right on the table in there is the camera. Turn back on for, okay. We did select it on for garage. I can't hear anything from outside. Can you guys hear anything? Yeah, so if you're outside here, you're not gonna be able to hear anything. All right, so don't expect your neighbors to, hey, Hey, I'm trying to record. <laughs> All right, so don't expect your neighbors to hear that siren from outside, but um, inside, or if you have the cameras outside, they're okay, they're not that loud, but um, I, you know, I guess they get the job done. All right, let's jump to the next section. We're gonna be talking about the quality of the video and the audio. All right, so as some of you guys may be aware, when Arlo first came out, they had major problems. I did several videos saying how much I did not like these cameras, but that I was hopeful that through software updates, they were gonna be able to fix everything. I'm happy to say that that was the case. Everything seems to be working fantastic now. I absolutely love the 4K quality, and it's something that when I first saw it and was just watching the video by itself, I wasn't sure how it was comparing up to other cameras. I have now compared it to the Arlo Pro 2, to the Ring, now to Blink, and the 4K on these cameras blows all of them away. I'm really happy with the 4K footage on here. Now, if you want 4K footage streaming from the cloud, that is an extra cost, so you do have to pay for that in the subscription but for free, you can have 4K recorded directly to the base station and get your 4K footage that way. Now these cameras do still have the same lag that the Pro 2s did as far as when they're running off of battery, it does have a short delay, so you may miss the beginning of your clips. These cameras do have three second look back and the ability to set up activity zones, but they do have to be plugged in for those features because they are so power intensive. So for these cameras to make sense, you can't have such power intensive things running off of battery. That is why those features require you to plug it in, which if you have the ability to plug it in, the three second look back is worth it. I really like that feature. Even though I don't have the ability to set that up at my front door with there being no power over there, I do have the solar panel hooked up, which is keeping my batteries topped off. However, the solar panel does not allow you to use these features. One thing that I wanted to know when I bought these cameras is that with the new base station, did it improve the, the wait time for the live feed to come up? Unfortunately, it did not, at least in my case. I noticed that it still did take quite a few seconds, maybe 
five to eight seconds for the live feed to come up. So I'd bring up the app, click on the play button to bring up the live view. And it's about five to eight seconds before I would actually get a live view on the cameras. I did not notice much of an improvement from the Pro 2 version. Okay, stop and answer some of your questions. If you plug the cameras in, it does not provide continuous video recording. That is an extra subscription that you need to purchase per camera. The 4K frame rate on these is 24 frames a second, which is really good compared to a lot of these other cameras that can't even get close to that with 1080p. So 4K at 24 frames a second. Another question I have is, does it really have a 180 degree view angle? Because if that's the case, technically, you put two cameras facing opposite directions, you should be able to get a 360 of the area. So what I did is I tested this out. I put it on the front of my house. I actually started by putting it on a box with my garage door being the baseline. So that way we can see what the field of view look like. I was not able to get 180 degrees with a straight on view looking out of my garage. I did have a tool in my toolbox that kind of gave me an idea of the degrees. And from what I'm seeing, looking at the shot here, I'm losing about 10 degrees on each side. So that brings it down more to about 160 degrees instead of the 180. I would say is pretty impressive. I mean, I know it's not as advertised, but just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like, this is what it looks like on the side of my house, looking down both sides of the street here. Next question I have is how well does the auto tracking work? It doesn't, I hate it. I, I hated it before, I still am not a fan of it now. It jerks all over the place. It's a lot better at um, looking at the motion of things and really being able to zoom in on things that are moving where before it didn't, but it's still all over the place. And one thing to keep in mind too, is that if you do have auto tracking and zoom on, it turns off the 4K feature. So you're only seeing your footage in 1080p, you can no longer see it in 4K. So for me, I would rather just turn that feature off, keep it in 4K and be able to zoom in on whatever I want to zoom in on. So for me, avoid that feature, it's not worth it. Now the next question is, can I read license plate? I did cover this in the previous video that I did, but if you take a look here, I am 25 feet away from cars that are in front of my house. And if you look at the Arlo Pro 2 footage, you can't read this license plate at all at 25 feet away. If we take a look at the Arlo Ultra footage, it's still pretty hard to see, but if you do pause the footage and actually get a still of the camera, it actually comes in clearer and you're able to at least pick up enough to read it and give it to the police. So granted, it's not an amazing quality photo to read license plate, but it is much better than the Arlo Pro 2 was. All right, the last thing we're gonna talk about in this section here is we're gonna be talking about the audio, or as it says on the box, the new crystal clear audio. Comparing this camera with all the other cameras I've done, not even just Arlo, but Ring and Blink and the Arlo Pro 2, the quality of the audio is absolutely amazing on this camera. I love what they did with the audio. It sounds great. The They also have a feature in this camera where it has wind reduction, so you can turn that on. You will suffer more of a battery loss on it, but if you have a solar panel on it, it doesn't really matter. That'll just keep it charged up, so you can turn that feature on, but the audio quality is absolutely amazing on here. Let's jump to some footage right now, and I will show you what the audio sounds like with this camera. All right, so we are gonna be doing an audio test right now. I am about arm's distance away, so that is about three feet away from both cameras here. So we've got the Pro 2 and we've got the Ultra, and this is an audio test of what it sounds like between both cameras here. Uh, I would say that the Arlo Ultra definitely has a lot more of a bassy, good sounding quality to it. And the Pro 2 is a little bit tinnier, sounds a lot harder to hear, and just, just looking at them both on the computer, the Ultra is definitely much better than the Pro 2. All right, next up, night vision. Okay, so there's still the same infrared night vision that is on all the other cameras out there, but with this camera, it has the addition of what they're calling colored night vision. Now, is that just a marketing ploy or what is colored night vision? I don't remember, but I, there was another company that I saw referenced colored night vision. So I don't know if that's a new thing. My guess is that the lens just has a lower aperture, which is able to pick up more light. And therefore the spotlight on here allows the camera to switch off of a traditional 
infrared, night vision, and actually record clips in color. And after using it for a while, I'm actually really impressed with it. I do like it. It's a pretty cool feature. The name is a little questionable, but in a previous video, I did a comparison between the Ring Stickup Cam and the Arlo Ultra as far as what the difference is in night vision with these guys. To show you guys that demo, let's cut to it right now. All right, I wanted to take a step out here and show you guys what the cameras look like. So you can see both cameras are above me right up here. And I wanted to show you guys how dark it is outside and what the cameras are actually looking at. So if we see, you can see that the ring has night vision on already, but the Arlo is still shooting in color. It is dark out here. The street lights are already on, but I'm still getting color with the Arlo Ultra, which is pretty impressive. So I don't know about you guys, but I was impressed with that. I mean, I'm getting night vision so much longer. It's better quality. It's in color with the Arlo Ultra as opposed to the Ring Stickup Cam or the Pro 2 or even the Blink cameras. And as far as the spotlight goes, this thing is a lot brighter than I expected. So it's not blinding like a floodlight, but it definitely lights up the area. And one good thing is that if someone's approaching the house and sees that, they typically run away. There you go. In addition to the audio being awesome, the night vision is actually really good on this thing too. All right, a couple other of loose end questions that I have is, do these things connect to a NAS? No, they do not connect to a NAS. And how do I connect this to my TV? Whether you are in a Google Assist environment or you're in the Amazon environment, I did a video on each of those. So I will link those above if you guys wanna check those out. But after everything we've covered in this video, I love this camera. This is, a great camera to me. I know it is super expensive and there were definitely a lot of bugs in the beginning that I was not happy about, you guys were not happy about, but I feel like they've definitely cleaned things up. I've gotten comments recently asking what the camera I would recommend. It's gotta be this guy. This is the camera. If you are not on a budget, this is the camera I would recommend. If you are on more of a budget, there are plenty of other options out there. But as far as the Cadillac of wireless, battery powered security cameras, as of right now, this is the way to go. These are the ones I'm gonna recommend to you guys. All right, so now the moment that everyone has been waiting for, let's talk about the giveaway. I reached out to Arlo and asked them if they would like to do a giveaway on the channel for you guys, the subscribers, and they said that they would like to donate a starter kit for the project here. So it's gonna be a one camera kit, and this is gonna be for US residents only. But to enter, you need to be a subscriber to this channel, like this video, and comment below. So a question I have for you guys is, what is your favorite feature of this camera? Do you like the 4K video quality? Do you like the new and improved audio or the colored night vision? What is your favorite feature of these new cameras here? Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one. What's a question I could ask for people to comment below? Okay, I like that. I just need one minute of silence to say that, please. Emmy. Hello. Was that good? You liked it? You want me to read you this book? Is it story time? You look at the camera and say bye. You say bye. Yeah. Huh? You see yourself? Yeah. Bye. Yeah. There you go. Bye. <laughs>